In my previous tutorial, you learned the basic steps of embossing with the Cricut debossing tool on an envelope, but today's video is a little bit more expert level. Are you up for the challenge? You'll learn how to emboss a save the date invitation in not just one way, but two ways. The first is with an embossed decorative background, and the second is with embossed lettering. So let's get started. The materials you will need are the Cricut Maker or Cricut Maker 3, the quick swap housing and debossing tip, the fine point blade, the standard grip mat or the light grip mat, your weeder and spatula tools, the brayer tool, heavy cardstock, mine is 100 pounds, your choice of colored cardstock, I bought this pack of pre-cut 4x6 and then plain white cardstock as well, painters or frog tape, and an inkjet printer for printing and cutting the invitations. For both designs, we will be using the save the date template from my shop, which will be linked in the video description. Templates make creating projects like this so much easier and just saves a lot of time. My templates are through Canva and if you know, you know Canva is one of the best tools to use as a crafter and a business owner. The first invitation you'll learn how to make is the embossed background on a save the date invite. This embossed design is more so focused on the location of the event and I made two to show you some examples. Once you purchase your template, Canva will open with it ready to be edited. I'm tweaking the wording and adjusting the size while I edit. So I changed our names to save the date. Changed the date to next year. and edited the location and names. And of course, this is all customizable, so you might want to add something else. Now for the fun part, finding the embossed background image. Go to Canvas side toolbar on the left and click on elements. Here you can search a ton of different images. For this invitation, the simpler, the better. Since our fake wedding will be in Mexico, I searched for a palm tree and made it as big as I could. Notice that the lines aren't too thin, it's a thicker design. That's what we're looking for. So the embossed design looks much better. It will look weird now because it's not embossed, but I changed the opacity on it for a brief moment just so you can see a better view of what it will look like. Once our design is done, this step is super, super important. You need to save the embossed design as a separate page from the text, since the text will be printed on our printer. The easiest way to do this is to duplicate the page and then delete the opposite. So one page, you'll delete the text and keep the palm tree, and the other page, you'll delete the palm tree, but keep the text. Save it as a PNG image and make sure to click transparent background. Now this is a Canva Pro feature, but if you do not have the Canva Pro, you can manually remove the background when you upload it into Cricut Design Space. Okay, so now we're repeating the same steps from our envelope. Remember what they were? I'm referring back to my lovely diagram that I made for you all. The first step is to print your text on the invitation. I double clicked on the saved PNG text and then clicked file print. Since I have the pre-cut colored cardstock, I'm changing the paper size to four by six. My printer actually has these adjustable tabs in them. So once I insert the cardstock, it's properly fitted into the printer. Then I'll start printing once I hit print on my computer. This is the final result of the printed text, and now we're ready to go to the next step, which is to cut our base layer. First, we will need to upload it as a cut image into Cricut Design Space. I sized down the palm tree, but to get an even more accurate size, I made a template with the shapes tool. Select a rectangle and change the size to the size of the invitation, which in this case will be four by six inches.
From here, you will repeat the same steps we learned from my previous tutorial, which are very important when embossing. The first step is to create an offset layer of the total design. You'll click the offset button on the top toolbar and change the size to 0.012. The second important step is to change that offset layer operation to deboss. Now we move on to the TT method. This was explained further in my previous tutorial, but it basically helps with aligning your material. You can learn more about that and the other two steps in that tutorial since I want to keep this video a breeze for my experts. And now before we click make it, you're left with two layers. On the right hand side, you'll see one is for deboss and the other is for basic cut, which is our base layer template. Here's the diagram again to show you these steps. First, we need to cut our template on a thicker material such as heavy duty cardstock. And then we emboss our actual invitation with the debossing tip. Even though the basic cut layer is listed as the second one, we're going to cut it first. Connect your Cricut to your device and then adjust your material settings. I have mine set to the custom craft cardstock setting, which will also be a future tutorial. So hang tight on that. And that'll be on changing your material settings, but I'll have them on the screen in case you know how to do that already. Now we can prep our Cricut mat. Place the heavy cardstock down onto the Cricut mat and use the brayer tool to ensure that the material is firmly adhered to the mat. Again, I'm using frog tape to tape the sides and make sure it doesn't move while the Cricut cuts are base layer because Amy's mat is dirty and no longer sticky. <laughs> Just keeping it real with y'all. Always triple check and ensure that you have the fine point blade in your Cricut housing. Then we'll feed it into the Cricut and it will start cutting. And voila, it cut our design perfectly. And this is why we always do test cuts. The next step is to weed the negative spaces. Carefully remove the inside of the palm tree with your weeder tool. And on to the final step, embossing with the debossing tip. I changed the material settings to heavy cardstock 100 pounds and selected the debossing layer. Then add your pre-printed cardstock to the Cricut mat. Use the brayer tool for a firm press and add pieces of frog tape to secure it to the mat. Please do not forget to switch out your blades. Swap out the fine point blade and add the quick swap housing and debossing tip to your Cricut. Then feed the mat into the Cricut and it will start embossing. Look at how cool this looks. I'm already excited for our fake wedding in Mexico next year. I'm just obsessed with this tool now. And I also made a Paris one, the Eiffel Tower in the background, how beautiful. And that is how you emboss a design onto an invitation background. Now the second way to emboss an invitation is by embossing the text with this beautiful design. It is stunning and I can't wait to show you how to make it. Again, I'm using a template from my shop, which will be linked in the video description. I'm altering the text, sizing, and letter spacing. Save your work as a PNG image once you are done. Then upload it to Cricut Design Space as a print then cut image. Since only the bottom half of the invitation will be print then cut, we need to change the save the date to the deboss layer. I'll show you two different ways to split it. The first way is to upload the design again, but erase the bottom text with the eraser tool. So all that's remaining is the save the date text. Hit apply and continue and save it as a basic cut file to upload. The second way to split it is to take the print and cut design we uploaded and slice it. Select the shapes tool, then a rectangle or any shape for that matter, and select both the design and the shape to slice. It'll then automatically change one of the layers to basic cut so you can delete the other extras like the sliced rectangle and the print and cut layer. I kind of prefer the second way because you don't have to do all the extra work of uploading and erasing again. Now you have two separate layers that are ready for the, again, two important steps for embossing. Adding an offset to the basic cut layer, and changing that layer operation to deboss. And finally, 
the TT method. And if you need more help on what the TT method is, you know to go and watch that previous tutorial. Here's my diagram to show you the exact steps we'll be doing for using the debossing tip. The first step we're completing is printing the invitation. I wanna take a brief pause here and share that you can print your invitation in two ways. Either place a big piece of cardstock on your Cricut mat to print the invitation details and then cut it into the invitation size, whether it's four by six, five by seven, an oval arch with your Cricut. Or you can print it how I did before, which is by printing it on a pre-cut piece of cardstock without the Cricut. It can also get very confusing to follow all of those steps back to back, all in Cricut design space, especially if you're making invitations in bulk. What might work for me might not work for you. So that's why I'm always adding different options. Now moving on to our second step, cutting the base layer template. Connect your Cricut to your device and then adjust your material settings. The settings are to my custom craft cardstock setting and then be sure to click on the right layer. Then you can prep your Cricut mat. As you can see, I'm a big fan of getting multiple uses out of one piece of cardstock, but place the heavy cardstock down onto the Cricut mat and use your brayer tool to ensure that the material is firmly adhered to the mat. Then we're using frog tape to tape the sides to make sure it doesn't move while the Cricut cuts our base layer. Then we'll feed it into the Cricut and it will start cutting. Carefully weed it once it's done so your invitation can be ready to be embossed. I cut my invitation with my paper cutter so it was easier to adhere to my mat. Then onto the final step, embossing with the debossing tip. Add your pre-printed cardstock to the Cricut mat and use the brayer tool for a firm press. Add pieces of frog tape to secure it to the mat. Switch out your blades and feed your mat into the Cricut and then it will start embossing. Now your invitation has this beautiful embossed save the date design and is ready to be mailed to your guests. And those are the two ways to emboss an invitation with the debossing tip. Comment if you've tried the debossing tip with your Cricut yet. And if you have, please tag and DM me on Instagram because I always love reposting your projects on my page. Thank you again for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more fun Cricut tutorials like this one. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Breaks your little heart in mine.